Okay, this is uh, a video I'm making for my friends uh, Brandon Hovey and Austin uh, Simpson. And it's really about the one true for certain thing in psychology. And in order to talk about this, I'm going to go back in time to a point where I was about their age, in their, in their mid to late 20s. And I had this kind of job after I sobered up where a lot of the time I could, I could clean the building with my crew and we sort of had a great deal of free time. And anybody who has been a night janitor who doesn't tell you that at least part of their job is sleeping in a chair is lying. But I was uh, crew chief at the old Union South in Madison, which is now demolished. And at a certain point, I got bored with sleeping in a chair when I had the work done. And so instead, I went to the newsstand and they had Scientific Americans in psychology today's and in that work environment I started reading articles. At that time I had a bachelor's in history and political science and sort of a curious mind and I um, one of the one of the stories I read was in scientific there were three three things I read I'm going to be brief brief about it. One was about the time travel paradox, which deals with the deals with the idea that if one goes back in time to kill their hated grandparent, then they disappear. And some theorists who wrote for Scientific American had sec su suggested a way around that paradox that had to do with parallel and proximate universes. Well, I found that pretty interesting and that later became a cornerstone for my contribution to an academic bestseller that my wife and I edited called Picturing Tolkien, which was about the Lord of the Rings book and films and their relationship to each other. All right, the second thing I read in Scientific American was something about a particular discipline of social science called catastrophe theory. And actually, as I look back at it, the cat catastrophe theory article which I read was the, the genesis for the next article. And basically, what catastrophe theory states in social science is that at a certain point, if you introduce too many variables into a system, into a model, if you put a test animal under too many stresses, the stresses don't, don't cancel each other out. The animal goes crazy. The dog bites someone or the rat goes nuts and, and it becomes impossible to model. Well, I still think that that's a pretty cool idea, although I tried to talk to uh, Tom McFarland, he's still teaching math at UW-Whitewater and a lot of people wish he would retire. But he spent quite a while telling me I knew absolutely nothing about catastrophe theory and spent about an hour doing it. But then I humiliated him in a go-board game and so I guess it was okay and I gave a lecture to his math course on the history of chess and charged him for two meals, so we're kind of even. All right, well, here's what it cuts down to. Uh, stress point theory gives weight to life events. And, for example, the most serious stress point event one can have is death of a spouse. Then death of a parent. Grandparents are pretty high. Getting a new job and having it be a good job is high. And all of these things together, if you reach a certain 
critical maths, you become very vulnerable for having being almost like the like the test animal in my earlier example. If you're carrying a lot of stress points, you're you're vulnerable. Something bad's going to happen. Your 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 attention is going to be eaten up. You know, I think about that uh, a couple semesters ago. I took this exceedingly demanding course, and I got off to a bad start, which was my fault. And the more I tried, the more I alienated the group I was working with, and I alienated my professor. And I actually took some training to improve my communication skills. But I remember one particular time feeling a desperation because I'm a high achiever, knowing I could maybe flunk that course, and driving as fast as I could to Hardy's on Claremont to get my double cheeseburgers and my special because, boy, I had to have something. And in the process of doing that, I came as close to being smashed by a bus in my PT Cruiser as anybody would want to do. And it almost makes me believe in God that I'm still alive. Okay, I'm back to the stress point thing because one of, what I told my friends is given the world that they're in and the stress they're under, that we, we cannot afford another lost generation. One of the problems with present economic policy is there's all kinds of stuff that needs to be done. And if you don't believe that, drive up to Rice Lake or something and try not to drive with, with, without breaking an axle. But we got people that would work, that have student debt like Russian peasants, but the kind of infrastructure which we could build at very low, low interest rates, we don't because somehow or other people seem to think that it's best just to let the rich keep their money and not pay as many taxes. But in the Great Depression, there were all kinds of programs, not only to build roads and take care of forests and things, but there were artist projects and writers projects. And, and we kept from completely losing that generation by stepping in on a policy level. Now, one of the things that I've said is that given the stress point environment, you don't want to be roadkill on the highway of life. And what I mean by that is in the same course that I took, where we were ramping up the stress just as much as you could, no, pres no, no prisoners, an F if you were two minutes late on a paper. I had to uh, leave my wife in the emergency room to turn a paper in because I didn't want to get thrown out of school. One of my classmates told, told me, who was heavily in debt, that she had fall, fallen in front of the courthouse building on Farwell. And she lay in the road for a half an hour because she couldn't risk having to pay a $2,000 ambulance bill to a friend got her. Well, in a world like that, I almost think of a Simon and Garfunkel song, which I wish we get rights to play, called Slow Down, You Move Too Fast. You got to make the morning last. I'm a terrible singer, but it really is like feeling groovy. But watch your step. Watch your back. I mean, I've survived. I'm kind of like the World War II fire, uh, fighter pilot that has been on a couple hundred miss, missions. And don't jump in desperation at everything that's offered you because there's a life past this. And Trump isn't going to be president forever. And if I've got anything to say about it, and we really do make Wisconsin great again, Walker's not going to be gut for governor, governor either. And assembly people are not going to laugh in the face of my friends and students and say, no chance are we going to pay for your education. Because those idiots are driving Wisconsin's future out of Wisconsin. They're making it a place where you don't want to live. I got into this thing about uh, spousal benefits as far as 
insurance and such. Now, and apparently the only way that you can have life partner be benefits in Wisconsin is if you're married. Well, what if you don't want to do it and you're a high-powered professional who is going to run a plant in Wisconsin? It happens. But are you going to put your plant there if Wisconsin is trying to impose something on your lifestyle? If it's Wisconsin or Silicon Valley, who wins? Well, these are real economic issues. And as I, as I can tell you that I am still working on my Western Wisconsin ad hoc Committee for the Restoration of Net Neutrality. But I'm going to change that to make Wisconsin great again. And we used to have a motto of forward. And that was before we were engaging in the race to the bottom. You know, uh, I'm about done, I guess. So I'll wrap up and say I still we're going to do a second video here. This one has been a little bit of an ad hoc thing. But I took a long shot on several opportunities this weekend. I'm not going to specifically mention them because that wouldn't be cool. But as they say in the Dead Poet, Poet Society, you got to see, seize the day. But while you're seizing the day, look several times before, before you cross the street because there's a bus around the corner with your name on it. And if you don't have health insurance, hey, and you're carrying student debt, hey, you're going to be enslaved for the rest of your life. So watch your step. And that's Uncle Phil saying, on to the next one.